Hello, I am Alfredo Behrens, uh, and in this session I will not really teach you how to negotiate, but I will guide you through the analysis of stakeholders, in practical terms. You see, what happens is that when you deal with business, usually they are so closed up, <laughs> there's such a lack of transparency, that you don't really know who the stakeholders within the corporation may be whether they may have little pet projects that compete with the outcome of what you're negotiating. So it helps to focus on the big issues of international relations to understand the importance of figuring out who's going to win and who's going to lose from a particular situation. And we will analyze uh, two specifically, the South China Sea and the Strait of Hormuz. First of all, uh, let's look at perceptions. Uh, they drive our attitudes. Uh, if you look at this graph here, you will see that information has increased far more substantially than trade, uh, foreign direct investment, or even migrations. And yet, uh, because you perceive such a great change in information, this might tilt your perception towards exaggerating the importance of migrations or of trade or of foreign direct investment. Well, once you understand the importance of perceptions, have a look at this graph here. Huh? It's an important graph. It's on, on oil transportation. And of course, there are many areas there, many straits that are important, but probably none as important as the Strait of Hormuz or the Strait of Malacca. Let me just focus in a minute on the Strait of Malacca. It has been important since uh, the Portuguese explorers established contact with Asia. That is where they started one of their most important fortresses. And then they were taken over by the Dutch and later by the British, who established uh, an important base and the tip of the Malaysian Peninsula. That was Singapore, that later became a city-state. Hmm? So this has been an area of great importance for contact with Asia and the West for over 500 years. Well, far away in the West, you may be tempted to think, well, <laughs> so what? <laughs> but you see, that Strait of Malacca gives access to the South China Sea. Uh, and that is a matter of great uh, contention at this time, because the South China Sea is a very important maritime route to, for China, but to other countries as well, but particularly for a China that is expanding internationally, as it once was for the Japanese that were expanding across Asia. And that led to the attack of Pearl Harbor, because they saw as the Americans as an obstacle to their expansion. So you see, the access to the South China Sea has been crucial now for very long. And part of the reason of the problem is that there is a conflict of sovereignty in the area. According to the United Nations, each one of the countries around it may have access to about 200 miles of the South China Sea in front of their beaches. Uh, but China is not satisfied with that and it claims control over a great part. So you see, it's not only the place that is important, but who gets what out of it. Another important point here is the Strait of Hormuz. Why would that be? Well, of course, because there is a lot of oil going through it. But the big question is, where does this oil go to? Who are the major beneficiaries of that oil transportation? Immediate beneficiaries. Who imports the largest amount of the oil that goes through it? Well, there are three countries, China, of course, India in second place, and Korea in third place. So there you are, huh? <laughs> three major power horses of Asia take the oil that passes through that strait. It is incredibly important for them, of course, for everybody, but particularly for them. Well, of course, the Strait of Hormuz is most important for those countries that take so much oil out of it, uh, but also for other countries which may be less significant in terms of oil consumption, but who might take a larger share of their imports from the Strait of Hormuz. 
And in an interconnected world, uh, the markets are very important. And, you know, if there is a problem in that Strait of Hormuz, it reflects on the oil prices everywhere. So, you know, the whole world is a stakeholder of what happens in the Strait of Hormuz. But bear in mind, some countries have a greater interest in that strait than others. Well, this is a very interesting session, I think. <laughs> but please watch those videos that I've sent you. They are more impressionistic rather than academic, but they drive the point uh, on, on the Strait of Hormuz particularly and also in, in South China Sea. Uh, so I want you to watch those videos, to read the material, which is a bit heavier, but, you know, interesting. And uh, above all, I want you to think. The whole purpose of this was to train you to think on stakeholder mapping. There are different stakeholders that have different interests with more or less impact on their behavior. And this is something that it pays for you to understand. And of course, at the tuition, we'll fill in the gaps. Thank you.